Marcos Jr. inherited daunting problems at home, including a coronavirus pandemic better economy, soaring inflation, unemployment, and mounting foreign and domestic debt, in addition to long-standing poverty and decades-old insurgencies. But one of his main foreign policy focuses during his first 100 days in office has been rekindling United States-Philippines relations. Marcos Jr. is the namesake son of the dictator who was ousted in a 1986 pro-democracy uprising amid widespread human rights atrocities and plunder. That, combined with U.S. President Joe Biden's high-profile advocacy for democracy and human rights, has left many surprised at the Philippines' leaders' efforts to rekindle ties between the allies. It's a quantum leap, right, from what we had during the Duterte era. So a Marcos, in this case a Marcos Jr., is ironically seen as a breath of fresh air in the United States. America's relations with the Philippines, its oldest treaty ally in Asia, entered a difficult period under former President Rodrigo Duterte. During his time at the country's helm from 2016 to June this year, he threatened to sever ties with Washington, kick visiting American forces out, and once attempted to abrogate a major defense pact with the U.S., while nurturing cozy ties with China and Russia. Duterte made five visits to China and two to Russia, but vowed never to set foot in America. But Duterte's successor took a different approach. Last month, Marcos Jr. flew to the United States to deliver a speech at the UN General Assembly and met Biden for the first time on the sidelines. After Marcos Jr. triumphed in the May 9 elections in a landslide victory, Biden was the first world leader to call and congratulate him.